hello citizens and welcome back. In today's video I want to talk about where exploration fits into the economy and gameplay of Star Citizen and what major features we're missing before it can be implemented. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here is a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. Most of us understand exploration as going somewhere where no one has been before and discovering that place. In Star Citizen that could mean going through an unmapped jump point and seeing what's on the other side. But exploration could also mean going to a place that is known and exploring it in detail. For example, flying to a planet that is known but wasn't properly surveyed yet and looking for mineral deposits there. It could also mean going to a relatively well mapped place but looking for something hidden. For example, you learn of a secret outlaw hideout in a cave on Hurston, so you go to the general area and start looking for caves. So we can say that Star Citizen will eventually offer a very large range of exploration opportunities. From discovering and mapping entire star systems with your Carrick or Endeavor to combing through forests on foot to find hidden locations. Technically we already have some features of small scale exploration in game. We can find and visit caves, crash sites and outposts and find loot or valuable minerals. And now with the ability to save map markers we can even revisit areas we found. So for example if you found a river along which you found many mineral deposits or clusters of valuable plants you could save that location and come back to it in the future to collect more. But things get a bit more complicated when we scale exploration up. Let's start with exploring unknown jump points. We now have the tech that allows players to jump from system to system, but we're missing the manual navigation feature. Manual navigation will be necessary for jumping through unexplored jump points or jump points that don't have a gate built around them to stabilize it. But this is a fairly minor feature which can be added later. What's more important is that we have the ability to jump from one system to another. But here comes the next problem. The universe of Star Citizen is a very curated and bespoke experience, meaning that as far as we know every planet and moon requires some work from a developer to be brought into the game. This creates two problems. First, the existence of every system is known, that is, assuming CAG followed their star map and implement the systems listed there first. And second, if CAG start creating new star systems without announcing them or revealing them in the star map, they can't possibly make star system faster than they're being discovered by players. And jump points actually worsen this problem, but also provide a possible solution. Traveling between star systems and star citizen requires the use of jump points, which are essentially wormholes. However, unless they're big enough or have a jump gate built around them, these are unstable and can appear and disappear randomly. So on one hand, travel between known and developed systems is confined to existing and known jump points. There is on the other hand also a possibility of discovering alternate jump points between known systems, which would be valuable data for smugglers or generally any party that doesn't want to use a known jump point for whatever reason. This even allows CAG to temporarily create routes between systems that are normally linked, which would actually encourage people to scout for temporary jump points in well explored systems. And it also creates an opportunity for CAG to quietly add new star systems and linking them to the existing ones. But that brings us back to not having enough star systems. I don't think CAG ever explicitly said that the star systems listed in the star map are the only star systems that are ever going to exist. Though they are likely to be the first ones to be implemented or at least some core portion of them. But this is not really enough to facilitate exploring the unknown as we would expect. But there is also a lot of empty space between the known star systems, so CAG could simply add new unexplored and unnamed systems into this empty space and link them with new jump points. Which would in turn create exploration opportunities and eventually development of new star systems and creation of settlements. But that still doesn't solve the problem of quantity. CAG simply can't make enough planets by manually crafting them. However for years now CAG have been working on the tools they use to create planets and star systems. 
and they keep making these tools more and more automated using procedural generation. The most time-consuming part of creating a new star system is creating the points of interest, such as space stations or ground outposts. But if you're creating an undiscovered star system, you technically don't need these. Of course, you could probably include some low probability of an undiscovered star system having a ship crash site from a previous expedition or an abandoned outpost. But by reducing the amount of bespoke work needed to create a planet, you could actually create a solution to the problem of quantity. CAG could technically fully procedurally generate undiscovered star systems. They would first need to create a set of star, planet, moon and other location archetypes and define some variables that would adjust their look and function. This would then allow them to build a system to procedurally generate new star systems from this base set. The system would first select the structure of the system, then the star, planets and any hazards like solar flares or points of interest like asteroid fields. Then, for each planet it would generate the terrain, biomes and any harvestable deposits or points of interest like cave, rivers or structures. This new star system can then be placed and then it can be procedurally connected with neighboring systems. This procedural generation approach does have one minor drawback. Since the set of archetypes used to generate new systems and planets is finite, it would generate locations with similar look and feel. However, this is not that big of an issue, as it seems pretty reasonable that many locations across the verse would be similar, especially in the context of having thousands of star systems to explore. This issue can also be somewhat mitigated by expanding the set of archetypes used for procedural generation. So that covers the creation of locations for players to explore. But now we have to talk about the tools they need. Now, we do have exploration ships like the Karak or the Odyssey and many others, but the ship is just a platform that allows you to go to places and carry the tools you need to explore them. This pretty much comes down to various scanning modes and tools. I believe CAG will extend the existing scanning mode and scanning console functionality to enable this. A good approach would be to allow players to install scanner modules on their ships, enabling them to scan for jump points or planets or other points of interest. Then CAG also mentioned the ability to send out quantum probes that return data on what they find as they fly along. I think it would be pretty cool if different exploration ships were focused on different types of exploration. For example, a Carrick could focus on discovering and mapping new star systems while, for example, the Constellation or the Terrapin would be better at mapping individual planets and discovering what mineables and points of interest can be found. Which brings us to the final missing feature data running. While data running is a gameplay loop and a profession on its own, it is also an important part of exploration. Because when you discover something, you need a way to pass that information along and monetize it. Which is where the whole structure of data running comes in. This could possibly result in a new gameplay loop of surveying and exploration missions assigned by various groups wanting to exploit the newly discovered system or even claim it as theirs. And then we can also start thinking about what happens after you discover a new star system and sell this information to a data broker or another party. At that point, that system becomes known and with some effort from you or others it might become mapped and its deposits discovered. At which point there will be players and NPCs wanting to exploit this or even set up a base. As players and Quanta visit the newly discovered system, it would be very interesting to see the interactions and ad hoc missions that emerge. There is also potential for new outposts and space stations to pop up as the star system becomes more traveled. This also creates an opportunity for a power struggle, because these new systems may be discovered near inhabited systems but might fall outside of the jurisdiction of the UEE or other governing bodies which gives outlaws a reason to use these new systems as a staging ground. This not only creates a situation of multiple outlaw groups fighting for the control over the system, but also creates clashes with the security forces of groups wanting to mine or otherwise exploit the resources, as well as attempts by governments to take control and secure the system to stop outlaw raids into their own systems. Though this obviously falls outside of exploration gameplay and more into the area of the dynamic economy and dynamic events. But it would be very interesting to see CAG implement all of this sometime in the future. However, being able to explore new frontiers is the first step towards this larger system of global power play. 
And while Star Citizen is very much about the story of each individual player, we can't forget that our individual choices and behavior will eventually affect the verse as a whole. Either through the discovery of new systems, exploiting their resources, using them as trade routes or by fighting to control them. And with that being said, that's all for today. What do you think? How will CAG create enough planets for us to explore? Is procedural generation the way or do we want bespoke planets and systems? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, fly safe and I will see you in the verse.